everyone and welcome to part two of Canvas and Cookies. We're going to be painting an orchard basket because in the fall a lot of people like to pick apples. So if you have some of the colors from the jack-o-lantern, uh, we'll use those. If not, we can remix them. Let's get started. I also have my assistant Andrew here to help me out and make sure that I don't paint too quickly. All right, we are going to take our big brush and uh, tap it out on your napkin so it's not watery. You're gonna dip into straight white. Now I know the canvas is already white, but I wanna go down the two sides because it brightens it up just a little bit. And I'm using a painted over canvas, so you might see some things behind the white, but that's okay. But anyway, you're gonna take white on both sides, just straight up and down cover that and that's going to just brighten it up just a little bit. Okay, the first color we're going to use is a light blue. So we're going to take a little bit of white. We don't need a lot of this color and a little bit of blue with our big brush to mix. Okay, so like a half scoop of white and just a corner of blue and you want a light blue for the sky. We don't need much of this color so you can just mix it in a small little spot. Okay, now the, this uh, painting has a lot of tight corners, so if you want to use your little brush, that's totally fine. I'm going to use kind of the corner of my big brush. Just go around the apples, the top of the apple basket. Now, if you go inside the basket a little bit, that's okay. The red should cover up this color. And then right about where you see the edge of the basket, that's going to be our horizon line. So you can put that in and just paint blue, this light blue, above it. Okay. It doesn't have to be right there. If you want to go down a little bit further, that's fine too. It's just a separation line between the sky and the grass. And you're going to paint everything above that. On the, on the left hand side, you don't really have that area because the basket goes all the way over. So you just need to fill that in on the right hand side. Okay. So I have a light blue in there. Now, if you want to, you could dip just a little bit the bristles of your brush, or you could even take your finger in the white. I'm just gonna dip my finger in the white, and I'm gonna put some clouds in. So you can either move in a circle if you want to, or you can just spread out the white just a little bit. As you move further out, it's going to get a little bit fluffier. It might blend in because our blue is very wet. So we can come back and you can add a little bit of clouds on either side of the basket or just one side, it's up to you. I'm just putting a little bit of white on both sides. And again, we can come back and put a little bit of white over top of that. It's just to break up the blue. Okay. Yep, just put your, you have a lot of paint there. So go ahead and use, yeah, just spread it around. Okay, now I'm going to use the light blue that I mixed because I don't need it again. And all I'm gonna do is add a scoop of yellow to it and maybe just a little bit more blue. And this is gonna be the green grass. If you have some of that green left over from the pumpkin, that would work too. Maybe a little bit more blue. This grass is a little darker. Okay, actually that green that you have there, Andrew, would be really nice. You still have your green from the other painting. Okay, and for this, I'm gonna actually use my little brush because I wanna put some texture in there. And instead of painting it, I'm just gonna dab. So I'm gonna just dab around the basket. And you can go over top of the basket a little bit. That's gonna be brown. So we can clean up the edges with the brown. Now, as you can see in the example, the screen comes in front because the basket is sitting in the grass. So we'll need to do that part after we put the brown on. But right now we're just gonna dab with this green all around the basket and come up to that skyline. When I have the first coat on, I'm gonna add a little bit more blue 
and maybe some yellow, but I wanna go for a darker green. So to this color that I have, I'm gonna add another scoop of blue and a little bit of yellow, and I'm just making a darker green. I'm gonna add that on top of the grass that I already have, just dabbing here and there. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to completely cover what I have, it's just another shade of green in there. And then I'll use that to put on top of the basket because that's a little bit darker when we get to that point. Okay, so that's our grass. And when, once you're finished, you can rinse that brush. All right, the apples are mostly going to be filled in red, but I do wanna make one other color. Andrew, you ready? I'm gonna do a scoop of red and just a little bit of black. Yeah. This is gonna be a dark red, just a tiny bit of black. I probably went a little heavy on that. I'm probably gonna add another scoop of red. So a big scoop of red and just a tiny touch of black. You want a maroon color, which is gonna be more of a highlight color for the apples. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush because I wanna put the, the bright red on first. I'm gonna fill in the apples with just straight red. You can kind of make little circles like this where the apples might be. And if you go over the edge, that's fine. I know that you're gonna be filling this in with, with red and you may not actually be able to see the brush strokes when you're all finished. But if you put in the circles now, it's gonna be easier to highlight when we go back with that other red color that we have. So I'm just adding little circles. Some of them are gonna to blend together and I know that. But at least I'll have a sense for where they are when I put the highlights on. They can be all different sizes. They don't have to be all tiny ones. But I'm just going from one side to the other of the basket with little circles. This may take you a little longer, so feel free to stop the video if you want to. Just make sure that there's red filling in the entire top of that basket area. Now, as with most things, especially if, we just, if you just watched the jack-o'-lantern, if you let this dry a little bit and then put some more red on top, you'll get a darker color. So that'll be darker because it's two coats than some of the other apples. So you could start drawing in some additional circles and you'll see that those darker colors, those darker apples stand out a little bit more. Can you see that? So here's, I, that's one coat, that's two coats, two coats, two coats two coats, two coats. I can see, I don't know if it's coming through on the video, but I can definitely see that there are some areas where it's darker. Okay, so that's one way that we can make some of these apples a little bit darker, and you can actually show that there are circles in here. It's not just a blob of red. So that's one way. And the other way is that we'll take just a little bit of that highlight color. That's okay, Andrew. You can have more apples in your basket. That's okay. Could yep. you please help me? Yep, I'm gonna wipe this off. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, over. okay, no problem. This is good, good thinking. You have a wet napkin if you need to wipe anything, okay? And we're gonna just press pretty hard and wipe it straight across, then fold it over to a clean area. Okay, and I'm just gonna wipe it straight across. The other thing about this is that this basket is brown. So you're gonna be able to paint brown over that and it's not gonna be a problem. Okay. Okay? All right, so when we use brown, you can clean up that edge, but otherwise I think you're good. Okay. Great. Okay, so the other way to highlight the red is to just take a little bit of that color that we made, it's the red mixed with the black, just a little bit. And you can kind of just draw some of the edges of these apples. 
maybe not all the way around, but just top or bottom. And that's another way. We'll put that, you can see here, there's a yellow highlight showing where some of them, drawing that in too, but I'm, for right now, I'm just using that darker color. If it gets too dark, you can let it dry and go back over it with the, with the bright red. So for example, right here, that's a little bit dark. I can either try to pick it up or I can just go back over it with some dark or some um, straight red when it dries. Okay, so that's my apple section. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work on the basket. So I'm gonna rinse this brush and I'm going to use that brown that I have on my plate, straight brown, not the one that we, not the one that we um, mixed. I'm just gonna take that brown and I'm gonna fill in the basket. This is another um, color that looks better with two coats. So if it looks really streaky going on, don't worry, we can put another coat on. And just leave that sort of decorative part in the middle open. The basket has a diagonal side to it. So you can kind of put that diagonal line in on that side. This side looks a little round, more rounded. And because probably this is made of wood, if you have some brush strokes th showing through, that actually will look good. If you want to even put in some brush strokes this way, you know how some of those baskets have the crisscross? You could actually use the brush strokes to show the wood, wooden part of the basket. And nothing has to be exact, so if you, if you pick up a little green in your brown, that's fine. Your background might not be completely dry. The red might not be completely dry either. How are you doing over there, Andrew? Oh, good. You got yourself all done. Okay, okay great. All right, so now what we're gonna do, I think our white on the edges is dry. We're gonna put our little brush in the water. Take your big brush out, make sure it's clean. Let, we're gonna leave our basket alone for a little while. That needs to dry before we put the grass in front of it. And even before we put that orange band, we're gonna work on the sides. So we want a clean, big brush and we want it to be pretty dry too. Make sure I got all of that out. I have some green in my brush, probably from where I was mixing it. Okay, so I'm drying it off on my napkin. And I'm going to use my brush, and it depends on what size brush you have, but it's basically the width of the brush, and when you press a little harder, it'll spread out. So these stripes that are horizontal, we're just going to skip a little space, we're gonna use straight red and we're gonna go here, skip the blue and finish the stripe. Skip the blue and finish the stripe. So basically they should be across from each other. Don't worry about the little work here. We're just focusing on the big stripe. So I'm going to put my brush in the red and I'm gonna start at the very top the very top of the canvas, so the edge of my brush is at the top of my canvas, and I'm just gonna go all the way up to the blue, skip, and right here. Okay, if you wanna make it a little bit thicker, you absolutely can, but they should be in line with each other, see that? Okay, so now re-dip, because you want a good amount of paint on your brush, I'm gonna skip a little space, maybe two fingers, three fingers if your fingers are small, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come from the edge of my canvas to the blue, skip and roll right over. 
to the other side. It doesn't have to be exact, but we want it to generally look like a stripe. Okay, skip another two fingers, two or three fingers. Put one right here. Straight across and finish it. And maybe you only get one more down here. You don't have to finish with red. That's all we're gonna get. So we have one, two, three, four stripes. Maybe if we had skipped a little less space in there, we could have gotten one more stripe, but I'm just gonna make four stripes. And so because of that, I'm thickening up the one at the bottom just a little bit more. Okay. Make sure they're all very nice, nicely done stripes. Okay. Andrew, how are your stripes? Um, I forgot about... Oops, you gotta dry that off, dry that off. It's dripping down. Okay. That's okay. Okay, wait, you gotta dry your brush off first. And then I'm making one that big. <laughs> it just got bigger, huh? <laughs> um, okay, there you go. All right, so if you dry your brush, wait a minute. Make sure it's not super wet. Then put it in the paint. Now put it in the paint. If you want to use my red, you can. You don't need a lot. Hold on. You got a lot of paint there. You just want to dip the bristles in. You don't want a scoop of paint on the bristles. We're not mixing anything. There you go. Now skip a space. Okay, good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take my little brush out. I want to let that red dry. Go ahead, you finish. Oh, very nice. You finish those stripes. Okay. I have some orange left over from my pumpkin, but not a lot. I think I'll mix some more, and if you need some, it's going to be big scoop of yellow. If you already have orange, you can use it, but if not, big scoop of yellow, little bit of red, little bit of white. Okay, we don't need a lot. It's just for that band that's in the center of the basket. It's orange, the background's orange. Then we'll put the decoration on it, but. First, you want to do what's in the background. Okay, the one on the example looks a little bit redder. Let me put just a little more red in here. If you're adding red to your orange, just go a tiny bit at a time, okay? Not a lot, because a lot of red makes a big difference. Or sorry, a little red makes a big difference. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, go ahead and fill in your orange. Now, because this has white, if I need to clean up my lines a little bit, this should go over the brown. I might need to put a second coat on that, but it will cover up the brown. This ha Because it has white in it, it's opaque, and that means it'll go over top ev of even a darker color because the light doesn't show through it. Okay. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit, and then what I wanna do is just put another coat right over that brown so you don't see through. Did you fill in your center part there, Andrew? Yep. All right. All right, let's rinse our brush. We'll go back to the red, and basically with your little brush, you're just gonna draw a tic-tac-toe board in, in between each of those big red stripes. So straight red. It's gonna look like a tic-tac-toe board. You can take the stripe all the way down. Okay. You ready, little brush? Look at this. Look, tic-tac-toe. Okay, now these lines you can use as your guide you can bring them all the way down. So one, two, three. Okay, and then just add those horizontal lines. They don't need to match up side to side in this case because they're really thin lines. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna just pretty much draw the line straight down
two lines down, tic-tac-toe board. You know how to draw those. And then I'm gonna give you the crisscross, horizontal crisscross. Uh, remember, remember to dip after each set of lines. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to look like that. I didn't re-dip and so I didn't get a nice line. Now I'm gonna need to go over top of them which is fine, but if I had just dipped in before I did those lines, I wouldn't have that issue. So go over any lines that have those little white spots because we, we want them to be solidly red, okay? Even these could use a little. If your white was still wet, you gotta wait, wait until it's dry because you don't want these lines to be pink, okay? This is, it's kind of like a picnic basket looking um, pattern that red picnic cloth, you know what I mean. Okay, <laughs> not a picnic basket. All right, I'm gonna dip the back end into the red. No, I'm not. Let me wipe that off. That's gonna be our last thing. I'm actually gonna use my little brush, rinse it off. I'm going to use yellow and white because I need to put, I'm gonna put this wavy line on first, so look. I was about to do my little dots, but it will be easier if we do this line first. So we're gonna start on one, at one corner and we're just gonna go top to bottom all the way across. Then we'll go back and in each section, and you may have more or less sections than this, but in each section we'll put a little red dot. So because our orange is darker than yellow and we want yellow to show up, we're gonna do a scoop of yellow and a scoop of white If you have some from the other, you can mix that in. All right, I know my orange is still wet. You guys let yours dry before you try this, okay? So start at a corner. It's probably easier for you guys if you start at the left corner and then go up top to bottom, squiggly line, okay? You may need to go over it. Some of mine blended in because it, like I said, my orange is still wet. If you wait, until your orange is dry, you won't need to go over it like this. Okay, all right, so I've got my line in there. The other thing I wanna do with this yellow is just highlight a couple of my apples. So I'm just gonna take just a little bit and highlight some of the round parts of the apples here and there in my basket. Not a lot, just a little bit. If you like that dark highlight and you don't wanna put any yellow, that's fine, you don't need to. It's just to give it a little little extra color. And then the last thing I'm gonna do on the basket are those red dots. So I'm gonna dip the back of my brush in the red. I'm just gonna go to the canvas and I'm just gonna touch the canvas or I might, I might make a little dot with it depending on how big I want them. And it's gonna be in between each curved section And then the last thing I'm gonna do is put that green grass in front of the basket. The basket should be dry now. Okay, so wipe off the back of that brush. Now put some green grass in front of the basket. Probably rinse your brush. It has yellow and white on it. If you, you don't need to rinse it necessarily, but I'm gonna, rin I'm gonna rinse it and go in that green that we made, that second darker green. I'm gonna start at the bottom of the basket and pull up. So I'm gonna start a little bit below the basket and pull some grass up and away. So you're pulling up and away. It gets thin at the end, just like a blade of grass would. Because we did the rest of the grass with dabbing, you may wanna just do a little bit of dabbing too. Doesn't necessarily have to be all blades of grass. If you think the dabbing looks better, you can absolutely do that. Okay, and you can be finished. This is the end of the basket. I did say though, if you wanted your clouds to stand out a little bit brighter, once this all dried, you can take your finger back in the white or your brush if you don't wanna get your finger in there and just add a little bit of white on top of some of your clouds and that'll brighten them up.
Okay, and that's the end of the orchard basket. So I hope you enjoyed painting that with us. And now you can work on your cookies. Make sure you get fresh water though before you do your cookies. Thanks for painting with us. And thanks, Andrew.